The Forbidden Router. Really though, it's a little bit like Homer's Forbidden Donut. It's pretty good, but it's not for everyone. The promise of the Forbidden Router is one device is reasonably secure that does all your home routing and all your home server stuff, even for 2.5 gigabit internet connections or beyond, or your wireless access points and your security, your Steam cache, if you want to cache all your downloaded games for your whole network, plus any other apps that you might want to run, own cloud, next cloud, whatever you want to do in one appliance. This is a video for a power user, not something I actually recommend that you do unless you understand what you're getting yourself into because there's a lot of caveats and a lot of gotchas. Let me explain. Okay, we've got our home server series, and this can go really well with that because you're talking about one machine to do everything. However, replacing your router with something that you DIY requires careful consideration when it comes to following the setup here and, you know, what I recommend that you do. And replacing your router is definitely the last thing that you should do once you've uh, attained clarity for all the crazy jiggery pokery you're always hearing about here on Level 1 Techs. Cause if you replace it before you're ready, you're gonna complain, you're gonna come to the forum and you're gonna yell at me, and it's gonna be bad, so let's not do that. Uh, you know, in the past we've done videos on using an old computer with PFSense to take over your router function, and this is pretty much the same thing. We're still gonna use PFSense for the router component, but we're gonna virtualize it. We're gonna virtualize the router part of it. I mean, PFSense is robust, secure, extensible, and generally very awesome, but running it as a VM? That's the forbidden part. That's the part they do not like. Running it as a VM is, uh, well, it actually doesn't make sense. I mean, if you really get down to it, it's not something that you should want to do, but we're doing it because we want to economize on hardware. I mean, the folks behind PFSense, NetGate, they do have some docs about running PFSense as a VM under VMware. They don't recommend this, and it's frowned upon, and it's uh, not something they really want to sell you support for either, because you know PFSense is a commercially supported project that you can use in commercial settings. And I, I will concede it makes sense. Router is critical infrastructure. More stuff can go wrong if you layer on complexity, and a router should be like a toaster. So I get, I get their position, and you should understand that, and you should take it to heart. So then, why, why do this? Well, for a home user or a relatively small network, I mean, my home network's not small, but you know, as things go, it's a relatively powerful box. It can do packet filtering and security stuff. PFSense has a secure Kata plugin, which is really awesome. You can run multiple WireGuard interfaces with all the encryption. You could have an internet connection beyond one gigabit. And for all of that, you need fast, good hardware. If your network has a DMZ or multiple zones, you know, your firewall's handling your LAN, and then you have maybe a server DMZ, and then maybe your kids have a separate network for security, that's also traffic not necessarily bound for the internet that would be nice to have some security filtering going on. Uh, a router with 10 gigabit interfaces, that's gonna be surprisingly computationally intense. So for your home lab, it might be a big ask to have a dedicated machine that's absurdly fast, plus another dedicated machine that's absurdly fast for your router, plus maybe even more stuff for your home lab. I mean, the Raspberry Pi hole got its start because it was running on a Raspberry Pi, but you also have Steam Cache and Nextcloud and maybe a Caliber book server, and then it sort of turns into you've got a whole flock of animals that you have to take care of and nobody really wants to do that. So, well, let's get right to it. What are our hardware options? Well, I'm a crazy person and I'm gonna do this for myself. This is AMD Epic. This is 64 gigabytes of memory, dual 10 gig, plus quad 25 gig. And this is also the highest clock speed Epic that AMD offers. But it's only an eight core. It's still many thousands of dollars though. Thanks AMD. This is, uh, yeah, this is completely nuts. But don't worry, remember this? This is a lower cost option. This is an AM4 option that still supports error correcting memory and some other stuff. I'm gonna cover how you can do this with more uh, affordable commodity hardware. But uh, yeah, you're not gonna be able to put a terabyte of RAM into this. Whereas we could this, 
Are there any, any registered ECC DDR sponsors in the audience? Give me a call. So I considered VMware free and, you know, ESXi free and Proxmox. VMware is a great choice and it has the appropriate security architecture. Running your router as a VM does have security considerations, uh, even beyond the other considerations. And if you want to learn VMware, then yeah, it's probably worth the $200 a year to get the, you know, sort of home user lab subscription, which has a lot nicer features than the free ESXi. Proxmox is a great virtualization platform, but I think XCPNG is a better fit for what we're trying to do here, and it has great potential with newer and bleeding edge hardware. XCPNG, like Proxmox, is freemium. We've got an installation guide and a video that we did on XCPNG, and that guide is linked below. So I'm not gonna necessarily rehash that here. Oh, but one thing I do wanna mention, if you uh, want the network interface, you know, to your VM to be as fast as possible, Virtualization software provides virtual NICs. These can be just as fast as real NICs, but often they have more CPU overhead. And if you already took a peek at the VMware documentation from NetGate, you'll see that they're using virtual NICs. And that's cool, because you can do high availability and failover in a cluster situation, but hardware pass-through with single root IO virtualization, if your platform supports it, uh, is fast. And you can also do PCI Express pass-through, which is more supported than SRIOV. Uh, those options are things you need to keep in mind as we think about the architecture of this. And remember in the beginning, I mentioned this is not for the uninitiated. I mean, you can follow along, but those things should not be like super, super strange to you. The idea is to give the hypervisor direct access to the hardware and then pass it through to a virtual machine. Because if the internet had virtual machine, uh, if the internet had access to your hypervisor, that's dangerously insecure. And we definitely do not want to do that. So let's start by configuring XCPNG. We will create a bootable USB, install some storage on this and get going. I am planning to put this in a probably three or four U rack mount case. I'm working on getting some cases from Sliger. So we'll see, we'll take a look. So from here, we've got PFSense configured in a virtual machine with access to really fast 10 gigabit interfaces for packet switching for the LAN and the WAN side and, and anything else we might need. We can from here decide to set up VLANs, virtual LANs on our switch and set up the corresponding VLANs in XCPNG. We could add additional interfaces. You can totally mix virtual and real physical interfaces in your PFSense as well, as long as PFSense supports it. But from here, we can do a lot of things that PFSense doesn't really allow or like out of the box. Yes, you can install Suricata so that you have packet filtering and traffic analysis and all that kind of stuff in PFSense, but what if you want to install Docker? It's like, well, it doesn't, that's not, that's, no. Uh, you have containers on on FreeBSD and you have Beehive and you probably could maybe enable Beehive but then you're getting way off mission for what PFSense is. So instead that's what the hypervisor is going to provide XCPNG. So we can run Linux and FreeBSD on this same hardware and even though we've we've only got eight CPUs, 16 threads, uh, not all of those virtual machines are gonna be busy at the same time. So it actually will scale surprisingly well. Also, don't forget we have that monster 256 megabytes of cache. It's gonna work almost as well on something that's a little bit more commodity, but we're gonna take a look at that specific stuff in a future video. So for the level one guide on the forum, I'm gonna walk you through setting up Pi-hole, Steam Cache, and a platform that you can use to install other things like own cloud or next cloud and other uh, pair of virtualized services, probably through Docker. Part of the goal of this in doing the virtualization and the other stuff too, is uh, minimizing the amount of headache from care and feeding. I will also mention that for PFSense, I could pass through a SATA device and this gives us a really interesting option. If things go completely sideways with XCPNG, I can go into the BIOS on the motherboard and tell uh, PFSense to boot, or tell the BIOS to boot directly off of the PFSense hard drive. This is pretty cool. PFSense also has a great built-in backup and restore facility. So if this thing does die catastrophically, and I've got a plan in place to replace it when it does die catastrophically, it doesn't break the uh, the internet access at my house and make all the people in my house super angry because literally nothing works. If you wanna go over the top and build a cluster, 
you can do that, but you lose the ability to pass through a uh, fully virtualized NIC, and a lot of the time your modem or your your uh, you know media access control thing or your uh, you know whatever your interface is for your ISP is not really built to handle automatic and transparent failover. So you're still probably going to have a hiccup or two there. Even with Mac cloning, it can be a little sketchy. Okay, you've got your PFSense virtual machine set up, but now we need to do the PCIe pass through. This is the setup that I'm working with. It's sort of splayed out on a desk right now, at least until I get a cool rack mount case. I'm working on that. This setup has multiple PCIe NICs. And if you need to do PCIe pass through, it works pretty much the same with the network card as it does with the GPU. This is harder to do on an old platform. And when I was putting this video together, I actually discovered something interesting. You may not need to pass through physical hardware. The reason I'm doing it is because it should theoretically definitely perform better than a virtual NIC. And if you look at the PFSense documentation for how they did it with VMware ESXi, they're using a virtual NIC. Of course, if you pass through a physical NIC, you lose the failover and redundancy aspect. So if you wanted to create a cluster of XCPNG machines, you could theoretically have a highly available router. This is really the wrong way to go about it though with PFSense. PFSense has its own built-in high availability and failover mechanism. And so if you want to do that, really what you should do is set up another XCPNG machine with the same type of PCIe uh, network card and pass through the PCIe network card in both XCPNG hosts and then use PFSense's ability to do hardware failover. It's basically the same way that you would do database clustering. Instead of trying to make the virtual machine highly available, you use the facilities of the database software to create a database cluster, a database server cluster running multiple instances of the database software on mul multiple virtual machines on multiple physical hosts on XCPNG. You can actually set rules like this virtual machine and this virtual machine should not be together on this host. But that's maybe a story for another day. We just want to get PFSense up and going as kind of a basis. So the compute and GPU section of the XCPNG documentation is where you should be. And what we're going to do, you know, hopefully you should know you have to log in via SSH. If that sounds like some sort of crazy foreign moon language, you should go back to our earlier videos and our earlier tutorials and our earlier forum posts and get familiar. But basically you're gonna have to do everything here through SSH. Uh, what it is referred to as in the documentation is removing a PCIe device from DOM0. DOM0 is your host computer, it's your host device in the XCPNG Citrix Zen vernacular. And we do that by PCIe device. Oh, and here's another caution. If you flash your BIOS or reset your BIOS, the PCIe device numbering can change. That'll, that'll happen for NVMe devices, storage devices. Um, that can happen for other things. And that's because of uh, differences in IOMMU settings. You know, auto is different than enabled. It can be different depending on if you've got PCIe error correction turned on. Um, 10 bit address decoding. There's a bunch of different platform settings that can affect your PCIe device numbering. So keep that in mind when you update your BIOS or something like that, that, you know, mysteriously your PCIe pass through might break. And that's unfortunate because I just updated my BIOS. Why can't I get on the internet? Well, that might be why, just a word of caution there. But once you've taken that out, according to the documentation, you can run Excel space PCI dash assignable list on CLI. And that should list the devices that you've taken out of DOM zero that you can then assign to your virtual machine. You're going to have to do that through the command line as well. So you can do XE VM param set and then you know, other config PCI and then the UID of your virtual machine. Then you can start your virtual machine and your virtual machine should find the PCIe device. In the case of PFSense, it should show up as an interface and then you can assign that interface and make it, you know, opt one or LAN or WAN or whatever. You can even use the console in the virtual machine to do the auto detect thing and just plug in the wire and be good to go. For my use case, I need three physical interfaces minimum. I might be able to get away with a virtual interface or two for some other stuff, but I need at least three physical interfaces. So I'm actually passing through two PCIe NICs and that's why the configuration is the way that it is here. But I'm gonna try to add some NVMe and do some experiments to see what works really well for Steam caching. I also wanna add uh, Pi-hole. And so both of those things have DNS services. So this is gonna be something that we cover in a future video because we're gonna to have to have a whole complicated DNS hierarchy 
on our local area network. But when you start chaining a bunch of DNS servers together, that can increase your DNS latency. You'll definitely feel if your DNS is even slightly, slightly more latent. Makes your whole internet connection feel like crap. Um, so that's something we'll have to cover in a future video, but this should get you up and running with PFSense on the Forbidden Router as kind of a starter. Now we need to add a virtual machine that's gonna run Docker and everything else, and maybe another virtual machine or two, we'll see. Know that it's possible and know that there are people on the level one forum that can help you get it done, myself included. Uh, but also know that that's not recommended or supported or uh, you know anything of the sort. Yes, you can get small appliances that do this as well, but with really high speed internet connections that are a gigabit and beyond, those small appliances are gonna struggle if you try to do anything other than basic routing and firewall tasks. Even Securicata, even PFSense plugins. So something to keep in mind as you embark with us on this journey, on this off script, not for noobs journey. I'm Wendell, this is level one, and uh, definitely help shape the next videos in this series. This is sort of an offshoot of our uh, ultimate home server series, because I would like to be able to run. I mean, just having everything on an appliance like this where it's centralized, I just love that. I love that. I love the concept. I don't love how fragile it is. And so maybe we can address that in some clever and creative ways. Anyway, I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Let's, Let's discuss, discuss that. that.